Hi there. So you want to know exactly how the new pop growth mechanics work and how to maximize your population. The short answer is capacity, but it's a little more complicated than you might think. Let's dive in. Quite a few things have changed in the new Stellaris patch, none more so than population. Now, if you're not aware of how population worked in the previous patch, I'm just going to quickly cover it. So population used to be a base rate of growth every month would be applied to a planet. That would be three, and you'd have some modifiers from species traits, from technology, from various things. And this would accumulate over time. So after you reached 100 of this value that you were storing up, you would get a new pop. There was a secondary mechanic, now that is pop assembly. That was a fixed amount each month, similar to pop growth, starting at usually plus two, and with extra jobs, you could increase that. And after you reached 100, you would also get another pop. Now things are different. Instead of having to reach 100, you now have to reach a new number, which is based on the total number of pops in your empire. That new number is 100 plus the number of pops in your empire divided by two. So for example, if you have 200 pops in your empire, you will need to reach 200 total accumulated pop growth in order to get a pop. This is also applied to pop assembly, which means that the more population you have in your empire, the longer at a static rate of growth or pop assembly it will take to build or produce a new population. The second thing that they have added is changing the way that the base pop growth works. Before, base pop growth was only three. Now they've added a logistic pop growth element in and that will change your pop growth to somewhere between basically zero and six. It can never get higher than six as a base and it can never get lower than 0.03 at its lowest. As you've probably heard about already, this new population growth number, this logistic growth rate, is based on both the number of population on the planet and the carrying capacity of that planet. However, the relationship between these two numbers and your growth rate is a little bit opaque. And so far, I haven't seen anyone cover it in detail to explain what it is we need to do to maximize our pop growth in this new edition. So the question we're asking is, how can I get the most pop growth in Stellaris Nemesis? And that actually is quite a difficult question to answer because we've seen that even if you are at say 15 population and your carrying capacity is say 40, you're not experiencing very much additional logistic pop growth that you could be at only say 3.5 base on one planet. Whereas on another planet, you are in a seemingly similar position with a similar number of pops, but your pop growth is much higher. So the reason for this, I'm going to explain a little bit later on in the video, but to sum it up, it's not trivial. And if you don't want to watch that bit, you'll just have to take my word for what I say next. So how do we maximize pop growth? The most important thing now is your carrying capacity. You need to make sure that your carrying capacity is above 35 roughly for your planet or you will never ever see a benefit from logistical pop growth, only a disadvantage once you reach 50% habitation or 50% or of the capacity of your planet or habitat or whatever you're living on. So how is carrying capacity calculated? Well, carrying capacity is four times your unused clear tiles, district tiles, plus your housing. So for instance, if you have a planet with a size of 20 and no tile blockers, and you have no districts on it, and you start with your capital building, the reassembled ship shelter, you're going to have a total carrying capacity of four times 20, which is 80, plus three from your three housing. So you'll have a carrying capacity of 83. What this means is that every time you build a district other than a city district, you decrease your total carrying capacity by two. And every time you build a city district, or a building which has additional housing, you are going to be increasing your carrying capacity by 
In the case of a city district, the difference between the housing it provides now due to your technology level and traditions, minus four, which at the beginning of the game will just be one extra carrying capacity, or in the case of a building like the, uh, the housing building, you're going to be getting an additional three carrying capacity because that provides an extra three housing. Habitats and ring worlds, well, their clear tiles, clear district tiles, provide slightly different carrying capacity than a regular planet. In addition to that, the tiles on a Gaia world in increase your carrying capacity by, I want to say, six, so it's equivalent to a, a reasonable housing district, and a tomb world increases your carrying capacity by less than four. I think it's two. I don't know those two. Somebody, if they know, please comment that in the comment section below. But this kind of leaves habitats at the raw end of the deal. Each empty t a district tile on a habitat only a gives you an additional three population growth. And because you need to have a carrying capacity of above 35 on your planet before you'll ever get any benefit from this S-curve, this logistic growth, that's really hard to do with a habitat. You need to upgrade your habitat to have lots of districts and lots of housing to get above that 35 limit. Whereas a regular planet uh, with some tile blockers on is going to be above that limit already. So the cheapest and most efficient way to raise your housing capa uh, carrying capacity now is not in fact to build housing districts, which will cost around 500 minerals a piece, but instead to clear tile blockers. Clearing tile blockers has just become the most important and essential part of the game for population growth. On your home world, most of your tile blockers will only be 300 energy, and each of them will probably increase your growth by somewhere in the region of 0.3 to 0.5 additional growth per month. If you stick around to the end, I'll be running down a breakdown of exactly how to get through these different bounds and levels and how much it's extra it's going to add to your growth. But for now, I'm just going to say that clearing tile blockers is the best thing you can do on your home world for maximizing your uh, increased growth. Now, there's nothing we can do about this hard cap on how many growth points you need to build a new pop, which is based on population. So the only thing we can do with that is try to maximize the number of growth points we're getting. What you'll also see uh, is that once you reach the maximum additional pop growth of three, which can come before you ha are half of the carrying capacity, the way they've calculated this extra pop growth is a bit lopsided. So they've got an equation and they've, to they've told the computer this equation can have a maximum value. And I'll show you the file now. This is the, the game file and they say in here that it can have a maximum value of two. It's a multiplicative factor and that means that you can't get a higher base growth than six because the maximum factor here is multiplied by two. But what that does is it effectively cuts off the upper limit of population growth due to the new equation, due to the new uh, population growth mechanics. And it means that once you reach this max population growth, you can plateau there for a long time past being at over half of the capacity of the planet. So you could be at two thirds of the planet's capacity and still be on maximum growth because of the way that it's calculated. So an interesting idea to do will be to make sure that once you hit this max growth, you start resettling or forcing resettling by having unemployment on your planet. You want to maintain the housing because negative housing will cause you to ha lose pop growth quite quickly. But you want to make sure you push your pop growth out from this planet to other planets which aren't at their maximum pop growth of six yet, the maximum base pop growth. And when you do that, you're going to be able to get this plus six planet growth on as many planets as possible. Now, looking at the data, because I've, 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 I've basically I've looked at the data, I figured out the equation they've used in the files. You'll see that in a, in a little bit later on in the video. And I've worked out which planet sizes are useless in terms of carrying capacity. So a carrying capacity of 66 or below will never, and I'm going to say that again, will never reach this maximum pop growth due to the logistic growth rate. So if you are in a world below 67 carrying capacity, you'll never be able to get this plus six growth. On the other hand, if you are at a world of size, size, say size 82, you'll reach this maximum pop growth of uh, at, at around 25, 25 pops 
and you won't start losing any of your pop growth until you get to around 60 pops. So between 25 and 60 pops, you'll be at plus six pop growth per month base, which is phenomenal. That, in addition to the red bonuses you can get from traits and from, uh, from technologies and from different planet types, for instance, if you're on an Acumenopolis, you're gonna be getting 50% extra pop growth. So let's look at that. An Acumenopolis of size 82, between 25 and 60 pops, that's going to be getting a pop growth of six, plus 50%, so nine. And then let's say you've got another bonus, let's say you've got Rapid Breeders, plus 10%. That's uh, plus 60%, so that's going to be uh, 9.6 pop growth per month. Now, at, a, at 200 pops in your empire, that means you'll be getting a new pop roughly every 20 months. That's under two years. Let's say you're at a really big empire, you're at a thousand pops. And let's assume at this thousand pops, you've also got the gene technology, the, other, the, the two gene technologies for an extra plus 10%. That's going to put you at 10.8 pop growth per month. And at a thousand population, that will take 55 months, so around four years. So at a thousand population, which for the new version of Stellaris, that's a really big empire. A lot of the AI empires won't be getting anywhere near a thousand population because they won't be exploiting the new logistic growth rate that you can achieve by getting uh, high carrying capacity planets with at least uh, roughly 23, 22, 23, 24 population. So that isn't so bad, you know, that, that's kind of the, that's the mid to end game now. You're going to be looking at getting new pops on your capital if it, or, or your Acumenopolis with some basic technology and rapid breeders every, every four years or so. That's not as fast as old pop growth. But it's not pop growth isn't dead either, you know, that's, that's only an extra 10 months or so beyond the initial value for how long it takes to get a pop at plus three growth rate with 100 pop growth. So yeah, it's population growth isn't dead. You just have to manage it and work out how to do it. Here I've started a new game. I've started a Relic World start. My initial capacity is 48. I have 28 pops and that's giving me a base growth from logistical pop growth of 0.99 additional growth. All I'm going to do is I'm going to queue up the three generic tile blockers. I've grabbed a little bit of extra energy so I could do this at the start. Usually you wouldn't be able to do this, I acknowledge. And we're gonna see what effect this has on our pops. Our first tile blocker is cleared. We're now at plus 1.47 pops. We've gone from 48 to 52 planetary capacity. Seems like a minor change, but that's giving us an additional 0.5 pop growth per month. That's equivalent to around a 20% increase to our growth speed, which is amazing. We've completed the second tile blocker clearing project. We're now at 56 planetary capacity, an additional four, and that's due to the, the additional empty district we have available. That's put our pop growth up to plus 1.87. A total change now we're looking at of around 0.9 additional growth that's around a total of 30%. And here we've now completed the final one. We are now at plus 2.2 pop growth. We are at a planetary capacity of 60. We did gain an additional pop from clearing that district, but overall what this has done is it means we are now at a total of 5.25 pop growth before modifiers. If we continue clearing our tile blockers here, we are going to get up to the plus six per month top pop growth, and we can maintain at that plateau for quite a while. I'm glad you stuck around. This is the part where I'm going to explain how I've arrived at these interesting conclusions. So, the first thing I did was I got data from Stellaris, and then I looked at the game files. Now, I, along with quite a few other people, have been trying to look through the files and work out how this new pop growth is calculated. Now, I found the uh, constants they use. I'll show those on the screen now. As you can see from the constants, they have a maximum logistic ceiling of two, a minimum of 0.01. Uh, this is obviously the, the multiplied by three, the base rate, and you can see the base rate there. Now, the logistic pop 
growth minimum pops, it assumes that all colonies have five pops. Well, that's great. And then it also ignores penalties to pop growth if the planet is below half the carrying capacity. So if, if at any point this equation would give you a value lower than, than uh, one, which it, it does quite a lot if you're at, if you're at some of the lower end of capacity at 20 or 30 for a habitat, you, without this little bit, you'd, you'd be on no growth at all. So uh, the max carrying capacity as well is that they've put that in there for, for the modders, uh, etc. Now the other thing to note is the required pop growth, that's 100. And then it's scaled by 0.5 for every population in your empire. So that means that, as I said earlier, 200 pops means you'd need 200 uh, to accumulated growth to grow. They've also fiddled around with the overcrowding threshold. So you lose growth at 1.15 times the number of, uh, if, if your housing divided by your actual housing, required housing divided by actual is 1.15 or more, you get no growth. And then if it's 1.25, you start getting decline. They've also set it so that you can't, no matter what that ratio is, as long as you've got less than five uh, un unhoused people, less than five homeless people, but homeless pops even, you don't suffer from that. So, so that's something important to note here about growth as well. As long as you're, you're, under, you're under minus five on your housing, you're fine, you will still be growing, but you'll probably be losing a lot of pop growth on that planet to emigration. But that's okay too, that can go to other planets. You know, you don't necessarily need to worry about that. So I took some data and using that data, I managed to produce uh, a graph uh, using a planet of size 82. So the capacity was 82 even. And I took the, the growth rate at various levels at different levels of population. And I did that all the way up to 82 where happily the growth rate does flatline to zero, which we expect. Now to that, I have fitted, and I've, I've had to edit it slightly, but I've solved uh, the logistic growth equation, um, uh, dn, by, dn by dk, uh, which I'll show now to you guys, anyone that's interested. And using that, I was able to fit this lovely curve. So the orange that you're gonna see now on this graph, that is the logistic growth equation, and the blue is the actual data I recorded. Now, when I take into account from the previous uh, the previous thing there, when I take into account the rules, so it can't be above two times the pop growth. Also, below 50%, you can't have negative growth. Below 50% pops, you can't have negative growth. And it can't ever go below uh, minus three or below zero. Uh, so when I take that into account, I then get this graph. Now, the blue and the orange are actually really hard to see as different here, and that's because it's almost identical. So the equation that I, I'm showing on the screen now, I am 99.9% .9 sure this is the equation they're using. There might be slight changes to it. You know, don't assume it's exactly this, but I tested out, um, I did some curve fitting with various different equations. This is the best one I could get with the K minus one factors, as you can see. And finally, I took that and I, basically try to find out what the growth rate would be for populations at different supply capacities. So now you're gonna see this graph. From this graph, what you can see is that at the lower end of supply capacity, you will never get any bonus to your logistic growth, never ever. So, so your habitats that start at size 15 or size 17 or 18, once you've built one housing district, you'll only ever either get three base growth and then a penalty once you're over half of your population growth. In order to get any benefit from the list logistic pop growth, you need to be at at least 35 or 36 housing capacity. I, I, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but less than 38, but more than 34. Uh, and you'll only get a slight amount of uh, additional pop growth for around five to 10 pops. On the other hand, at some of the higher levels of, of supply capacity, so for instance, at 60, at 70 supply capacity or, or just above 66 or so 67 supply capacity, you will be getting the maximum pop growth finally. Before that point, the supply capacity isn't high enough for this equation ever to get to the point where you will be getting plus six base pop growth. So you need to be making sure all of your worlds have at least 67 uh, capacity but actually what you want is a lot more than that. Because of the way they've set the equation up, it means that you get this plateau at plus six. 
this this is the the monthly population growth rate due to logistic growth that you're seeing here so that ranges between minus three and plus three which means your overall base rate goes between zero and six so at plus three on this graph you are at six base rate growth now what that is going to mean is that at your high levels of population, at your high levels of supply capacity, so I'm looking here specifically at the region of 70, 74, 78, 82, you will get this big plateau. And the larger your supply capacity is, the larger that plateau is relative to your overall population. So for instance, at 82, you're going to be able to plateau from around 24 pops at plus six pop growth, all the way up to around 60 pops without ever seeing any negative modifiers or not even negative modifiers you won't fall down from that maximum and that's why my conclusion is to get the maximum pop growth you want planets with size 82 or more and you want to make sure the population on those planets stays between 25 and 60. that leaves you in a really good position and a really good place to get maximum pop growth across your empire now, if you've got any questions about any of this, if you disagree with me, please, please leave a comment uh, below. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I spent uh, a little bit of time today looking into this because I was reading on Reddit and I've seen a lot of people questioning this and confused. And I wanted to kind of figure out what was going on, what the devs had actually done. And so this is, this is my, I guess, best educated guess at what's happening. My model does seem to fit the data that I've observed in game. And I've, I've looked at not just one planet, but other planets. And the curves I've generated here for pop growth, logistic pop growth, do follow those same curves or the same growth rates I see on my planet at the correct population and supply. That They are off by, by around one or 2%. I think I've got some rounding errors, I mean, alternatively, my model could be ever so slightly off. But overall, I'm confident in the model. And I think that the takeaway from this that you need to apply in your games is that supply capacity is now king for pop growth. And not just any supply capacity, supply capacity of 80. So the, the, the kind of in summary, what you need to have is you need to clear your tile blockers as soon as possible. And once you've done that, then start building additional housing districts to keep your supply capacity right up there in the sky. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like. As I said, if you've got any feedback at all, please leave a comment. And if you'd like to see more content from me, please subscribe. In addition, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, there's a link down below. Thanks for watching.